we're going for the sawn off shotgun we're going for the sunrise um, stalker suit and the respirator for as much protection from the elements and as much protection from um, hazards as possible okay we've got a um, anti-radiation drugs just in case we find ourselves irradiated but we're going to be using our radio protectant to prevent ourselves from becoming irradiated in the first place we've gone for three um, first aid kits two you're dueling uh, two sleeping pills for when we need to go to sleep to heal ourselves, but we're not quite tired enough yet. We've gone for the two metamizole ampules, which gives us 10% damage reduction. Uh, one pack of caffeine tablets, which is going to give us more stamina and more weight carry, just in case we need an extra bit of uh, a boost to get some loot back to the base. Um, we've got some cystamine, which are really, really cheap. Um, radiation blockers okay and they they don't last quite as long as uh, radio protectant but they do the job and it's very very strong radiation protection okay and we've got three of those we have a sausage which you can eat if you're hungry we have a pack of bolts which is used for navigating anomalies uh, an emergency armor repair kit which will allow you to repair armor that's 85 durability and above we have a weapon um gun care item which will allow us to clean our weapons which are 40 durability and above we've got one pack of side block because we're probably going to need that in the future maybe possibly who knows i'm not saying anything but you might find it really really useful so keep hold of it and one fentanyl okay guys and that's going to give you your post heals as well this is my recommended loadout yours may be different you might prefer the toz you might prefer to go with the, the Papaja, the PPSH. You're going to find it's tough either way. You want the best possible start in your Gamma playthrough, right? First thing that I would like to sort of mention is Stalker Gamma is built off of Anomaly. Okay, and Anomaly is a story game in many, many ways. Okay, there's main quest, there's side quest and all that good stuff. If you remember that Stalker is an action RPG, you will understand how to progress, okay? So by talking to people, by getting tasks, by managing your relationships and relations with other factions and stuff like that based on the faction that you choose to start with. Now, either the Free Stalkers or Loners, okay? These guys, or Clear Sky, okay? These two are gonna give you a uh, probably the easiest start okay the most simple start and as you can see by the description they're recommended for new players all right they're recommended for new players mostly because you get treated you get treated pretty well i'll be honest you get treated pretty well as these guys um you know the only factions that are going to be against you are monolith who are against everybody bandits who are pretty much against almost everybody sin again ISG, okay, these are hostile factions, Renegade and uh, and military who, you know, military, uh, they, they have their favorites, but for the most part, you know, they pretty much shoot everybody else. You know, if you want to get yourself off to a really, really good start, start with a faction that's going to help you to learn the game and, and not just throw you into the deep end. Okay, recommended for new players, Free Stalkers or Clear Sky. I would recommend starting at Rookie Village because that's where Sidorovich is located. And Sidorovich is your um, faction leader. Okay, so he's the faction leader for the Free Stalkers. And he's the guy that you're going to be speaking to to get your main quests and all that good stuff. Okay, it's also very, very south on the map, which will give you um, a much better chance of surviving. Because generally speaking, the more north you go, the more dangerous the zone becomes. Okay, the closer you get to the power plant, which is the uh, like the center of... Um, what happened in the zone years and years ago make sure you read up on that by the way there's some amazing story content in there you know that that's where everything started right the more north you go the closer to the plant the power plant you get okay the more dangerous the more irradiated um and and the more sort of tougher enemies you're going to um, encounter okay so it gives you a nice uh relatively safe start as safe as the zone can get down by cordon and it gives you good access to the swamps where you can go and chat with the clear sky guys who are absolutely awesome and they'll give you a nice um quest line that you can enjoy as well so we're going to go for rookie village and we're going to play on easy and we're going to play on tourist progression difficulty and the reason why we're playing on easy guys is because this game 
is not easy. Even on easy, it is not easy. I promise you, it will still kick your ass. So don't be fooled by easy. Do you know what I'm saying? Okay, because it will, you're still going to get your ass kicked. It's fine. You're going to die a lot. It's part of the experience. Okay, don't worry about things like Azazel and survival mode. Um, I recommend checking those modes out once you've learned how the game works. You can leave accessible zone on because it just means you can travel around the map, um, you know, a little bit more freely. Um, and you'll be able to like move around without you know only having like one way to get places okay don't worry about warfare don't worry about iron man iron man is pain iron man is pain mode okay trust me play the main quest line first learn the game and then come and speak to me about iron man come and ask me about iron man because by the time you see this we've probably done a few days of iron man and i will be broken i will be a broken man okay Trust me, it's it's good fun, but it is painful. Um, campfire mode. So campfire mode is essentially, and I think campfire saves is uh, enabled by default in Gamma. Um, so you don't need to check this as far as I'm aware, but please um, just go with whatever's default. Okay, don't worry about messing with this stuff. What campfire mode is, is you can only save when you're next to a lit campfire. Um, I think it works in friendly bases as well, but for the most part, you need to be um, you need to be uh, at a lit campfire uh, without enemies around and stuff like that. Generally speaking, okay. I did my first playthrough with campfire mode on. Um, I found it to be pretty fun. It means that it, it makes it a lot harder to like save scum. You can't just like go up to somewhere and just keep saving and then oh I died. I can just reload straight from there. Like it makes it a little bit more tough with regards to where you start again when you load back up after you die um gives a little bit more of the old school feeling rather than you die and then respawn like five seconds ago it actually gives you some kind of like oh maybe you know maybe i'm not gonna die okay or maybe i'll try not to die here because i don't want to ruin that 15 minutes or whatever you've done of progress remember top tip for those of you that are new when you're underground or in a lab which well, labs are technically they're underground okay when you're underground you can save anywhere okay you can save anywhere underground so don't do what i did and get like 12 minutes through uh through um jupiter underground and forget to save and then die and do it all again like two times you can save anywhere underground it's very nice and i recommend that you do that don't worry about agony mode don't just don't worry about that okay you don't need to do that and timer don't worry about that either Okay, so your screen should look like this. All right, guys, your screen should look somewhat like this. Next, you're going to want to choose your starting equipment. Now, this is up for debate. This is up for debate. We've been speaking about this on stream a few times over the last few days. And some people say go for the TOS, the uh, the folding stock 106, right? Some people say go for the Papasha. Some people say go for the over-under. Some people say go for the uh, the sawn off my personal weapon okay my personal favorite is the sawn off i do feel like the sawn off gives you a really really good start it's powerful it's fairly compact it's fairly lightweight and uh generally you'll find you know that it does the job it's very effective against mutants and once you get 12 gauge ap slugs you can start using it as a little bit of a pocket sniper and uh, get those head taps on um, unsuspecting stalkers or even when you're in a fight with people you can just go straight for the head that ap slug will absolutely destroy anything it hits really really cool you'll find yourself using 12 gauge shotguns quite a lot um, as you progress okay so i personally would recommend the 12 gauge um if you're brand new i definitely would recommend getting the sunrise stalker suit over the leather jacket the weight actually um cancels itself out so carry weight is negated so don't worry about that uh, technically you get 600 more grams but it's fine okay and i'll go for the respirator as well for the um, radiation resistance so the reason why we're choosing these is because it will just give you a little bit more of a chance against um environmental hazards and um against you know fellow stalkers and mutants as well okay guys the leather jacket will make you super squishy 
I mean, you're going to be super squishy anyway, but you'll be even more squishy with a leather jacket. So I'd go for the stalker suit personally. From there, it may be worth picking up a cooking kit. You can use the cooking kit at any campfire, okay? You don't need fuel. Go up to a campfire. As long as it's lit, you can cook with the cooking kit. Just right click and use, okay? I didn't know that for a long time until the community saved me and was like, damn, what are you doing? you got a cooking kit and you're not using it. Okay, the cooking kit is great for cooking mutant uh, meat. And from, you know, it's, it's cheaper and you'll find that... Um, you know, you, you'll kill loads of mutants anyway. You'll find, you know, you shouldn't be having trouble killing mutants really and, and you know, taking their parts to to cook some lovely zone uh, dinner, all right? I wouldn't worry too much about ibuprofen, binoculars or the pistols, really. Uh, water, maybe. You can usually find water out and about. You can also buy water. It's fairly cheap. I would recommend getting radiation drugs, okay? Anti-radiation drugs are used after the fact okay so if you um become irradiated you use anti-radiation drugs if you don't want to become irradiated you'll use your radio protectant okay so two very very different items based around radiation and uh one you'll use before going into a, an irradiated zone and the other, okay, the, the anti-radiation drugs, you'll use that if you are like in a radioactive area. It really crept up on me. I'm, I'm going to need to quickly get these radiation drugs in me just to, uh, to bring that radiation down quickly. Okay, so one is to stop you from getting irradiated and one is to like, okay, I'm irradiated. I need to fix myself. So I definitely would recommend uh, picking up at least one of these, maybe two, but we'll see how many points we get at the end. Okay, from there... I recommend a couple of med kits and I recommend uh, Yadulin as well. Okay, so Yadulin is what's called a post heal drug. The way that the health system works in Gamma is when you get injured, your body parts go red. When you use first aid, they go yellow. And to heal up that yellow part back to white, you're going to need something called post heals. You can use ibuprofen, you can use Yadulin. But the really, really important thing to remember is to have a look to see what it post heals. So, for example, your Doolin will post heal your head, thorax, arms and legs. But it's not as effective as ibuprofen. That said, ibuprofen will only heal your arms and legs. It won't do your head and thorax. Okay, and you can see this by the properties part of the, uh, the tooltip here. Okay, so... Number one tip, always, 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 when you see a new item, highlight it with your mouse, have a good read up. It will tell you everything that you need to know, okay? It will tell you everything that you need to know about that item. It will tell you the properties. It will tell you what it causes, what it negates, um, how it helps you, how it hinders you. Everything is visible on this screen. It will tell you absolutely everything and they have a really nice little description as well just in case you want to read up a little bit more about it. Okay guys, so make sure to read every single item. We're going to take these two Yadulin because generally speaking you're going to find yourself needing post deals. How many points we got left? Loads of points. Okay, let's get these spent. Sleeping pills. Um, far more important than I thought they would be. Sleeping pills at the very, very beginning of the game will help you to, well, go to sleep, of course. You can't sleep in Gamma until you're tired. I know that sounds silly, but bear with me. You can't sleep in Gamma until you're tired, right? Now, why would you want to sleep? Sleeping heals your body, okay? You can heal yourself by going to sleep. It's very, very handy, okay? But you will find yourself in situations where you're going to be really injured, you're nowhere near a medic, okay? Because medics can heal you, but you're gonna be nowhere near a medic. You're next to a bed, but you're not tired. This is where having those sleeping pills comes in really, really handy, okay? So make sure you pack those sleeping pills. They will help you uh, get a good night's sleep and it will help you heal up and give you a fresh start in the morning, okay? You guys can't recommend them enough. I would definitely recommend these as well. So these are metamizole ampoule, ampules. And uh, long story short, these give you damage resistance, okay? So these give you 10% damage resistance. Very useful when you're fighting 
uh, basically anything, okay? Um, especially mutants that will run right up to you and attack you. It can be very, very difficult to dodge them. 10% damage resistance is kind of nice. Yeah, it is kind of nice. We've got 380 points left. Let's see how we're going to spend these. Caffeine tablets give you adrenaline and they also increase your weight carried temporarily. These last for about four minutes, okay? So they give you two and a half extra kilograms of weight carried and your stamina recovery is better as well. Okay, and they'll also um, give you dizziness removal and they'll also, of course, well, caffeine, it wakes you up, okay? It gives you some energy and it allows you to perform a little bit better, especially if your character is sleepy. So definitely worth picking up at least one of them just to sort of see how it works, okay? Speaking of radiation resistance, going back a little bit, Cystamine is only 20 points and it's definitely worth picking these up. Okay, Cystamines are great for um, heavy radiation um, protection and these last for 400 seconds. So about six and a half minutes, guys, you will get some heavy uh, radiation protection. Remember, guys, when you have applied that radiation protection you need to get through that radiation as fast as possible you need to make the most of being protected okay otherwise you will find that you uh you know start becoming radiated um and that's a world of pain you do not want to go down with radiation sickness and it happens extremely fast so be careful we've got just shy of 300 points left what else can we pick up um at this stage, I'd probably pick up another med kit. Okay, you're gonna burn through med kits, especially if you're getting yourself injured from uh, mutants and stuff like that. Okay, you are gonna get yourself injured. You are gonna um, get yourself in trouble. Sausage. You don't really need sausage. It can be useful, and for 15 points, it'll keep you going for a little bit. Okay, just over 300 calories. That's a fairly decent meal, to be fair. 300 cal calories is not bad. It's about half of your. Uh, Maybe a third to half of your um, uh, your food bar, okay, your, your hunger bar. Head torches, optional. 300 points. But I would recommend not going out in the dark. Not always avoidable, but I would recommend not going out in the dark, at least for the first few days. You're probably going to find a head torch, and you can always buy them, okay? You can always buy them. So would I spend 300 of my starting points on, on a headlamp? No, I wouldn't do that personally. Pack of bolts is useful for detecting anomalies, whether it's grav anomalies, burners, um, electrical, stuff like that. Okay, you can see um, you'll find yourself a safe path through anomalies using bolts and spent cartridges okay spent cartridges work the exact same way what they'll do is is you can equip them i think the default key bind is five or six you pull a pull out a bolt and you can throw it and it will show you where uh, if there's like a dangerous anomaly in front of you and it will allow you to figure out a path through um dangerous anomalies okay now we've got 195 points left so we've got a little bit of um a little bit spare here okay I wouldn't worry about getting um, the lead container because I, uh, if you speak to the dude in Rocky Village, I believe you get one of these anyway. Okay, lead containers are useful for containing radioactive artifacts. That would make sense in the future, um, especially once you've done your first couple of missions. Uh, for F Fnatic, that's the one, Fnatic, the guy that chills in Rocky Village. Okay, it'll all make sense once you've got your first artifact. Okay, so don't worry about that. I, I wouldn't bother getting that for now, okay? Emergency armor repair set. This will give you an idea of how the repair system works, okay? So the emergency armor repair set can only be used for armor pieces with 85 and above durability. So this is a preventative repair set, not run your gear into the ground and then and then bring it back okay you, you need to stay on top of your gear in gamma otherwise you're going to find yourself um, without repair kits you're going to find yourself having trouble and your kit isn't going to protect you nearly as much as it would if you stayed on top of it so yeah let's pick up the emergency armor repair set and we're going to use that to keep on top of our gear make sure we've got the most uh, protection possible gun care it's probably a good idea Especially if you're killing lots of mutants, okay, it'd be worth picking up um, uh, weapon maintenance. And guys, if you want to learn how to maintain weapons, I will put the link to our video in the description and maybe up in the corner somewhere that way, up there somewhere. Okay, guys, I'll put the, the link to the video up there um, and I'll put it in the description as well. 
very, very important to learn how to maintain weapons and equipment. Cyblock is amazing, okay? And there will come a point where you'll need to use Cyblock. I'm not gonna spoil it for you, but you might find that you need to enter a Psy field and you won't get through without this. It might be a main quest, it might be a side quest, I'm not telling you guys, but at some point, you will find this very, very useful. Let's pick that up, 50 points. I definitely recommend it, okay? That's all I'm gonna say. Perhaps a fentanyl will be the perfect complement to our loadout. And what that fentanyl does is it's a post heal and it will give you uh, three segments or three power okay worth of post heals to your head thorax arms and legs okay or post heal your whole body very very similar to your doolin okay um your doolin will do your head and thorax more effectively but arms and legs not so effectively the fentanyl is great for um an equal amount across the whole body okay guys so that's pretty much how i would run my loadout just to go through everything one more time, we're going we're going for the sawn off shotgun. We're going for the sunrise um, stalker suit and the respirator for as much protection from the elements and as much protection from um, hazards as possible. Okay, we've got a um, anti radiation drugs just in case we find ourselves irradiated, but we're going to be using our radio protectant to prevent ourselves from becoming irradiated in the first place. We've gone for three. Um, first aid kits, two yadulin, uh, two sleeping pills for when we need to go to sleep to heal ourselves, but we're not quite tired enough yet. We've gone for the two metamizole ampules, which gives us 10% damage reduction. Uh, one pack of caffeine tablets, which is going to give us more stamina and more weight carry, just in case we need an extra bit of uh, a boost to get some loot back to the base. Um, we've got some cystamine, which are really, really cheap. Um, radiation blockers okay and they they don't last quite as long as uh, radio protectant but they do the job and it's very very strong radiation protection okay and we've got three of those we have a sausage which you can eat if you're hungry we have a pack of bolts which is used for navigating anomalies uh, an emergency armor repair kit which will allow you to repair armor that's 85 durability and above we have a weapon um gun care item which will allow us to clean our weapons which are 40 durability and above we've got one pack of side block because we're probably going to need that in the future maybe possibly who knows i'm not saying anything but you might find it really really useful so keep hold of it and one fentanyl okay guys and that's going to give you your post heals as well this is my recommended loadout yours may be different you might prefer the toz you might prefer to go with the, the Papaja, the PPSH. You're going to find it's tough either way. Okay, you're going to find it's a bit of a struggle either way. But I would say this loadout, this inventory will get you off to a good start. You've got loads of meds. You haven't got a lot of food. So keep your eye out for mutants that you can, um, that you can kill and harvest their meat. Learn how to cook that stuff. Water, you can buy from traders. You can find it, um, you know, just exploring out and about. So just make sure you keep on top of that. Make sure you're uh, keeping an eye out for your water and your food. Okay, guys, but that is my recommended loadout. If you've got any questions, please feel free to ask in the comments. And if you're watching this live, let's have a chat about this now and see if you agree with me. And if you don't agree with me, then I want to know why. Why do you not agree with me? Tell me now, all right? Cool.